Welcome to Watches with Dennis, and we're continuing our Watches and Wonders 2024 coverage now with the brand Tudor, and I want to talk a bit about my first thoughts on the Black Bay 58 GMT. So, arguably everyone's favorite size of the Black Bay, finally available with a GMT function. Specification-wise, this watch is 39 millimeters in diameter. It has a lug width of 20 millimeters. The lug-to-lug distance is 47.8 millimeters, and the thickness is 12.8 millimeters. So, very much in line with the other Black Bay 58 sizes, but not identical. The watch case itself is steel. It has a black dial. It has a Coke-style bezel. That means it is black and red. Note that, unlike its sister company Rolex, this is an aluminum insert, not a ceramic insert, which is what they've always been doing with the Black Bays with Tudor, but I think it's worth noting. Uses a lot of gilt markings. The watch has applied indices. The hands and indices are loomed. And while the watch has a bi-directional GMT bezel, it does still offer 200 meters of water resistance, so dive capable. The reference number for this watch is the 7939G1A0NRU, and you can get it on the steel bracelet or a black rubber strap. Both options offer the T-Fit clasp extension. The watch itself is powered by Tudor's caliber MT5450-U. This is an automatic movement that offers approximately 65 hours of power reserve, and it is a Traveler GMT, so the hour hand can be independently jumped. In terms of my first thoughts, and again, this is not a review, I have not yet handled the Black Bay 58 GMT. Visually, it is extremely attractive. And this kind of falls into that realm I feel like we've often been seeing. Whenever you want something historic that you wish Rolex would end up going back and doing, we end up seeing it come out of Tudor instead. So Rolex for Watches and Winners 2024 revealed the GMT Master II, but it had a gray and black bezel, not the red and black Coke style bezel that many people, including myself, were hoping to see. So here we go. Tudor goes ahead and offers it instead. Note though, since it is aluminum, people will worry about it fading over time. People will worry about how easy it is to scratch. All the same complaints we've heard for years about the use of aluminum in the Black Bay. But The vintage look is, I think, why they continue to rely on that and not give us a ceramic insert. It definitely isn't cost. We know plenty of affordable watches in the dive space use ceramic inserts at this point for the bezel. I did notice in the available online images that faux rivets remain on the bracelet. That's still going to be polarizing about this watch. And I do think, while personally I feel that 12.8 millimeters of thickness is quite wearable, especially for a watch with dive capability, some people are going to argue this is going to be too thick for them. I didn't note earlier, but I should go ahead and say that in terms of pricing, in Swiss francs, I saw the rubber strap version is 4100 and the steel bracelet is 4300 So far more approachable, as you would expect, than the pricing on the Rolex. But back to my overall thoughts. With all those complaints out of the way, the aluminum bezel, the faux rivets on the bracelet, the possible thickness concerns, this is going to sell really well. The Black Bay 58 is arguably, I don't even think it's an argument, easily in my mind from everything I've heard, the most popular sizing line out of the Black Bay. It's almost perfect for virtually all normal wrist sizes. So anyone who needs something smaller ends up going down to the Black Bay 54. And of course, the original Black Bay line offers larger sizes for those that are looking for things over 40 millimeters in diameter. So we knew the sizing was right. I think a lot of people were really hoping for a GMT out of Tudor, either because it's so difficult to get the GMT Master 2 out of Rolex or they're uncomfortable paying that amount of money, or they just like the aesthetic differences like with the snowflake hands and all that that come with the Tudor. So given this colorway has been long wanted to be revived out of Rolex, I think a lot of people will go ahead and end up picking this up because I think this is the tantamount announcement that Rolex is not planning to bring back the Coke bezel. Obviously, they didn't say anything about it this year, and this would have been the perfect time to do it. So that being said, I mean, it's not like if someone's in the market for a GMT Master 2, I think they stay in the market for a GMT Master 2. I don't really think it it works in the way that this somehow fills a lot of demand and all of a sudden you're able to find Rolex Pepsis or something. I don't think it's going to be like that. But in terms of Tudor watches, this is easily going to be the watch that does the best out of all of the stuff they revealed on Watches and Wonders. And I think a lot of people are going to scramble to try and get it. And probably for the first few months, it's going to be a bit of a challenge to get. That being said, it is Tudor. They're going to make plenty of them. And I think by the end of 2024, these are going to be readily available. And probably by that point, starting to show up on the gray market. But those are my first thoughts. What are yours? Please comment them below. If you enjoy the video, please do give it a like. You want to know when I have a new video out? Just click subscribe and I'll talk to you all on the next one.